Ever since I started 3D printing, I felt like the one thing holding me back more than anything else was printing speed. Check this out. This is my 3D printer, and this is how fast it prints when I'm using standard settings. At this speed, this tiny boat took two hours to print. This flower pot here took 22 hours. Now, if you look at the scale of things the pros are printing on YouTube, you're looking at days and days of printing to complete. But that's not even the worst part, because what if you're a beginner like me, someone still learning how to 3D model and get the most out of your printer? Sometimes I'll check in after hours of printing, only to realize that I used the wrong settings and the print completely failed. Other times, the print will finish, but I'll realize the design I came up with had the wrong dimensions, or the object just doesn't work the way that I thought it would. That's hours of printing to notice a mistake, learn from it, and start the print again. Hours between every bit of progress. And that kind of sucks. But what if we could speed that up? Well, this is the AnchorMake M5, a new 3D printer with some pretty unique features that might be able to help with this exact issue. First, as an AI camera that claims to find problems with your prints and notify you no matter where you are. Even better, it claims to be fast. In fact, five times faster than any other 3D printer I've ever owned. But can it actually live up to those claims? And can you still expect high quality prints at those speeds? And I don't mean if you're an expert who knows how to dial in their settings, but what if you're an average person like me? Well, I've actually had this printer for a few months now, and I definitely have some opinions. On one hand, it has improved my workflow so much that it has quickly become my go-to machine. But at the moment, it also has one pretty big problem that can't be ignored. Quick disclaimer, AnchorMake did send me this printer to try and I didn't pay for it with my own money, but they also did not have any input as to what I say and don't say in this video. With that aside, let's get into it. Okay, when I first received the printer, the first thing that impressed me was the assembly, which was the quickest I've done to date. Now, unfortunately, I deleted all of my original unboxing footage, but the printer came mostly pre-assembled. All I had to do was attach this top part to the base, then I had to plug in four cables underneath and then mount the spool holder. That's it. Following the instructions, this took maybe 10 minutes. In the box, the printer comes with a nicely packaged toolkit with all the tools you need for the assembly and for daily use. It even includes an extra nozzle if you ever need a spare. You also get a little bit of filament to get you started, and it comes with not one, but two magnetic build plates. Not only that, but I just realized that these are double-sided as well. So you actually get four. And that's a pretty big deal for me, because if you saw my previous 3D printing video, which I'll link down below, you'll know that I damaged my build plate literally the first time I used my printer. And it was actually pretty hard to find a replacement online for it. So the fact that this one comes with a replacement is a really nice touch. After it was assembled though, the next step was to level the bed. And again, this couldn't have been easier. All it took was a single click of a button and the printer handled the rest. During the process, I took note that while my previous printer used 16 different points on the print bed to analyze its level, the M5 uses 49. Now, I have no idea if these extra data points are actually helpful or if this is more of a marketing gimmick, but in the end, it worked and that's what matters. In a way, it actually was better than my previous printer because after the auto bed leveling, there was no need to adjust the Z offset or make any other adjustments. That was all the calibration it needed. All that was left to do was to load the filament. Now, to do this, I first fed the filament into this tube as far as it would go. And then I used the printer's handy extrude feature. This feature heats up the nozzle to an appropriate temperature and then automatically pulls the filament in the rest of the way. It usually takes two or three presses of the button, but you'll know you're good to go when you see it start to extrude. Next to the extrude button, there's also the retract button, which you can use when you eventually want to change your filament. This has the opposite effect and will pull your filament out of the extruder head, allowing you to easily remove it. Honestly, I love all these little features that help you automate parts of the setup. They all seem like such little things, but they really do add up to create a solid first impression. They also make this feel like a product geared towards the average consumer and not just one made for hobbyists. Even when you look at the basics, like the design of the printer, the nice aluminum frame, the high quality touchscreen and other components, they all look and feel very premium. 
Personally, I really love this attention to detail, and it's one of the reasons why I've loved using the printer, and also why I'm proud to display it in my studio. But looks and setup are one thing, now let's take a look at the two features that make this printer unique. It's speed and the camera. First, printing speed, and the claim that it can print five times faster than other printers on the market. Now, what Anchor Make is actually saying here is that when you're first starting out, the default printing profile on whatever software you're using will usually recommend printing at 50 millimeters a second. The Anchor Make M5 though, by default, will print at 250 millimeters a second. Five times that default speed. According to Anchor Make, there are a few features that make this possible. First, having two belts on the Y-axis, along with a powerful stepper motor, allow for more precise control. It also has a direct drive extruder, which helps you get more reliable extrusion and retraction of your filament. Finally, the M5 comes with its own slicer, which is the software you need to take your 3D model and convert it into printing instructions that your printer can read. This is also the program that sets your printing speed. Now, there are a ton of other slicers out there that can be used as well, but the Anchor Slicer is meant to streamline the process with a preset that'll help you get the best results. To use the Anchor Slicer, it's as easy as dropping in the 3D model you want to print, next selecting the type of filament you're using, and if you leave it on easy mode, the software will automatically apply its recommended preset. You still have the option to change your layer height and infill amount, but I think 0.2 millimeters and 20% are a good starting point. You can also add structural supports if your object has overhanging pieces. Then hit slice to prepare the printing file, hit print to get started, select the anchor make printer you want to use, and the file will be wirelessly sent over Wi-Fi and start printing. But is it actually that fast? Well, here's what it looks like in action. In case you don't remember what 50 millimeters a second looks like, here is a side-by-side -side comparison. I'd say that's a pretty huge difference. If we look at the touchscreen, it also confirms that it is printing at 250 millimeters a second right now, which is the 5X speed that it advertises. Honestly, the first time I saw this printer in action, I couldn't look away because the speed looked so surreal and I kinda expected the print to fail at any moment. But the print was successful and it surprisingly prints pretty well at this speed. Here are some examples of items I recently printed on easy mode. For the most part, in my opinion, the prints look pretty great. They're not flawless, and depending on the complexity of the prints, I will occasionally get some imperfections, but nothing that would bother me when I'm experimenting and testing new prints. I even printed a few objects that are meant to push the printer to its limits, and although it did eventually start to show some flaws at the challenging bits, I still feel that the results are pretty respectable. Overall, I really haven't had many prints fail on me, and if I'm ever bothered by an imperfection, I always have the option to lower the print speed back down, which tends to solve most issues. If I lower it back down to 50 millimeters a second, the M5 is just as precise, if not better than my previous printer. But then the amount of time that I save whenever I speed it up is definitely the biggest benefit of all. However, to say the printer is five times faster than other printers on the market is mostly a marketing gimmick. First of all, most common printers can actually print faster than 50 millimeters a second. And just because your default profile on your slicer is set to that, if you learn a few basics, you can most likely push it further. For example, I found that my Ender 3 S1, which is my previous printer, can actually handle most basic prints at 100 millimeters a second and that's already twice as fast as the defaults. Anchor Make does clarify in a footnote that they are just referring to this default operating speed, but if you've never purchased a 3D printer before, this might be a bit unclear. Another thing I noticed is that the print speed settings change when working with other plastics. I print a lot with TPU, which is a softer plastic, and on the M5, the default TPU profile prints somewhere between 100 and 150 millimeters a second. Now, I do think that this might be a limitation of the material and not the printer, because I've often heard recommendations to print TPU at slower speeds, but even if this is the case, I do think that they could have been a little bit more specific with the wording on their website, just so everybody buying the printer at least knows what to expect. 
If I had never printed with TPU before, I definitely would have assumed that it would print at the same 5X speed as well. And if I bought the printer for that exact purpose, I might have been a bit disappointed. But it's not the end of the world. Even the speed that it does print TPU at is still faster than what I was printing at before. My main issue with this printer is with its other unique feature, the AI camera. This is the camera here. And with it, you're meant to remotely monitor your prints, take time lapses of your progress, and it should also notify you of any problems that occur during printing. To do most of these things, the camera pairs with the Anchor Make app, which is another free download. Now, I'm not too sure what the specs on the camera are, but I'll start by saying that the camera quality isn't anything special. As you can see, it's pretty comparable to a standard webcam. It definitely works well for monitoring if a print has failed or not, but if you're checking for smaller imperfections, you might not see much unless you have really exceptional lighting. On the contrary though, if you're printing in the dark, something I do like is that the camera has a built-in light that can be remotely activated from your phone. Even cooler than that, it also has some sort of night vision mode, which looks almost exactly the same as when you turn on the light, but works in complete darkness. The other cool thing you can do with the camera is get time lapses of your print. These are generated automatically and saved to the Anchor Make app. In my opinion, the fact that these require no effort and are auto-generated is really cool. And the final results are fun to look at. The one thing I'll say is definitely don't expect the beautiful HD time lapses you see all over the internet. Those are done with higher quality cameras like this one and sometimes other gear as well. The time lapses that the M5 makes are more of a nice bonus feature. My main problem with the camera though is with its third and most impressive claim, the AI detection, which at least for me currently doesn't work at all. Strangely enough, during all of my prints, the error detection gets triggered at some point every single time. The thing is, it's almost always a false alarm. At first, I just thought that it was very sensitive and was picking up on very minor imperfections, but then there were other times where I could clearly see that there was something wrong and it wouldn't pick up on it at all. And like I said, I've actually had a really high success rate with most of my prints, so now I just sort of ignore the error message and let the printer continue. The only thing I had to do was turn off all the notification sounds because when I was printing overnight, I could always hear the sensors beeping in the other room. Of course, I wanted to know if other people were having similar issues or if I just received a lemon. So I turned to Reddit. And to my surprise, I was instantly flooded with posts mentioning similar problems. In fact, every single post I read either mentioned having a problem with the AI or they didn't talk about it at all. Which at first seems really weird, because if this is a problem that most, if not all, people are dealing with, why would Anchor Make advertise a feature that doesn't work, especially since even if they excluded it, they would still have a really solid product? Well, first, on the software page of their website, Anchor Make states that the software for their printer is unfortunately still in beta. Now, I do have a prediction as to what happened here, and I think it has to do with the M5 originally being a Kickstarter product. When I look at their Kickstarter page, it seems that AnchorMake promised a guaranteed delivery date by August 2022 to anyone who backed their project. And my guess is they might have underestimated how long it would actually take. That, or it was intentional, and they decided that their backers would prefer to get the hardware in their hands as soon as possible, and then they could continue working on the software for as long as they needed. And honestly, it's not a bad idea. And I can also confirm that ever since I got the printer, I have received consistent firmware updates that have both improved the printing quality and the available features. In fact, ever since I started working on this video, there have already been a few software updates that have rolled out. One that has gotten rid of this false detection issue that I was having. The problem is, is that now the AI doesn't seem to detect anything at all, so the problem isn't solved, but in the very least, it does seem like they're working on it. My main problem with this though, is that the AnchorMake M5 is no longer just a Kickstarter project, and is now available to everyone. 
And in my opinion, the fact that some of their features are still in development should be way clearer on their website. Even though on the software page, it does hint that the software is unfinished, on the home page, which is what most people are gonna be looking at, there's no mention of it at all. I feel like even including a small coming soon label on the features that are still in development would really help manage expectations for new buyers. While at the moment, at least for me, it seems like the M5 is being advertised as this complete package, that for now is incomplete. I think when it comes to Kickstarter, you know that you're buying a product that's still in development, so risks like these might even sometimes be expected. But when you as a company decide to sell your product to the public, at that point, I think you just have to be really clear as to what features the buyers can expect right away and which ones they might receive in the future. So, my final thoughts. Like I mentioned before, in terms of hardware, this printer has been really, really solid for me. For the most part, it's the only printer I use at the moment, and its speed and consistency have been great. Even without the AI detection, I would definitely still recommend it. The only thing I would say is, if you're thinking about getting one, make sure it's because of the features that are currently available and not the ones that could be added in the future. Otherwise, maybe wait a little bit and see how things progress. Anyways, if you guys want an update video, if the AI detection ever becomes available, let me know in the comments below. Either way, I appreciate you guys for watching until the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.